Welcome to the WRL Daily Download. I'm Jack Hagel. If Republican lawmakers get their way, private school vouchers will become one of North Carolina's biggest education expenditures. They recently introduced bills that would eventually set aside more than half a billion dollars to help parents send their kids outside the public system. The bills have been debated along party lines, and WRL Education Insider Emily Walkenhorst is here to break it all down for us. Emily, welcome back. That is a lot of money that we're talking about. Yeah, it certainly is. So what are school vouchers and how do they work? So in North Carolina, the program is called Opportunity Scholarships. Essentially, a voucher is something that a family can apply for. You don't have to have certain grades or anything. So it's not exactly like a scholarship. Um, But basically, you apply uh, for these funds based on your income level. Right now, it's geared more toward lower and middle income families. And they give you an amount that's currently about $6,200, or that's what it will be for next year. And that money goes straight to the school that you say that you want to attend. So, so long as you qualify, which, you know, uh, that would be you currently attend a public school or you're entering kindergarten and you want to go to a private school instead, you apply for this voucher, the state determines that you qualify, and they give that money to the school that you say you're going to go to. And how would these bills change that? So these bills would get rid of the income eligibility. What they would do is they would change the amount you get in a scholarship to be based on your income. So, um, you know, the lowest income families would get an amount that's equal to what the state pays on average per student uh, statewide for public schools. So and that would be based on the previous year. So I think this year it's like seventy four hundred or so dollars. And basically, if you were the lowest income, you would get the full $7,400 or however much it costs to go to the private school up to that amount. If you're the highest income, you would get uh, about 45% of that amount, so just over $3,000. So why do these vouchers even exist? So the vouchers exist um, essentially, you know, it's it's a matter of school choice. It's, um, you know, it's something that, Uh, Republican lawmakers across the country um, have been doing for for decades, really. They've been pushing private school vouchers essentially as a a choice option for families to leave the public school system. Um, If you're not happy with the education you're getting at the public school that your child is designated for, maybe you're not interested in a charter school, or you're not interested in any magnet school or other public school that you might also have a choice to apply to, you're more interested in a private school, you can apply for this money to get financial help to go to that school. So the term school choice seems pretty innocuous, but there's a big partisan debate over it. Why is that? And uh, what are both sides arguing? So it essentially comes down to priorities. So Republicans have placed private school vouchers among their top priorities. I mean, they're willing to spend hundreds of millions of dollars on them annually It's easily one of the biggest education expenses they favor alongside just providing raises, which has bipartisan support. Um, But Democrats are more interested in increasing funding for public schools. So, you know, maybe more funding for school counselors and uh, school support positions, maybe more funding for disadvantaged students, special education students. Um, And it is worth noting that a lot of special education students do end up applying to go to a private school, either through the voucher program or through a different program that the state has set up for that. Um, But Republicans have said, you know, this is really a choice families want to make right now. They're more interested in just providing the, the private school funding for anybody who really wants this private school right now. Well, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll learn about how these bills could affect public schools. Stick around. Welcome back to the WRL Daily Download. We're talking with WRL Education Insider Emily Walkenhorst about the GOP plan to expand school vouchers. Emily, I'm curious what the data show. Do students actually perform better when they transfer to a private school? So it's really hard to tell. Um, There's no requirement that any of these private schools take the same tests that public schools do. So if you're trying to figure out, well, this this student went from this public school and, you know, they 
scored this or that on this test, um, you know, what did they score next year on a similar test at a higher grade level? Um, you can't really measure that because the private schools don't take the state end of course or end of grade exams. And so uh, there are they do administer some national tests, but they may not be the same national tests that public schools administer. So there's not a lot of information on that. There was one study that NC State did a few years ago where they took about 700 students, they gave them all the same tests, and they tried to see, you know, who, who did better. And, you know, they found that private school students did better on some subjects, not in others. Um, there was another um, experiment that NC State had done um, just for private school students that showed a lot of the improvement that they were seeing was really concentrated in certain schools. And so when you went to other schools that did had other practices, you really didn't see a difference. How could these bills affect public schools and, for that matter, the students who stay in them? So for public schools, it's really a, a more about the students you don't have. So if somebody takes um, a voucher and they leave your school, you lose funding for that student. So uh, from the state level, that's about $7,400 or so. Um, there could also be a federal impact. You might lose some funding there. Um, based on the funding source. Um, So essentially, you can lose several thousand dollars for that student. So, you know, that could make a a big impact if, let's say, you lose one student, um, but everybody else in the school still needs to be employed, all these other resources still need to occur, but you've lost several thousand dollars. Um, There's this theory that, you know, eventually it could scale at some schools, but really depends on who's actually applying for these vouchers and taking these vouchers. And there are a lot of fixed costs when it comes to schools. Um, So that's one way it could impact them um, is is schools could end up having to make cuts because in the end, what we're talking about with this expansion of vouchers is potentially you know, expanding by tens of thousands of students or even 100,000 students. And, you know, that's a significant percentage of the population schools could li- lose, you know, potentially hundreds of millions of dollars. What does that look like on the ground in the classroom? So you could look at it from the perspective of what happened when the state started charter schools. They gradually grew over the course of many years, probably a little bit slower than what the voucher expansion will be. And what's happened there is schools have just have to make calculations. We have this number of students. This is what we can afford. Sometimes you go to like a smaller school district and you'll talk to them. They'll say, you know, we lost these students to this charter school because this charter school offers all these electives and we can only offer PE and we can't even always staff the PE class. So, you know, it really comes down to what, how the schools decide to handle cuts. If they have to make cuts, where do they make them? Um, you know, and then it also is affected by what the state money is for. So state money comes down in the form of allotments that are for specific things. So, it really matters, you know, what did you did you lose a teacher based on that allotment? And then you just adjust accordingly. There are a lot of things that s- schools have big wish lists. They have very big wish lists, especially for facilities. They're very, very behind. They're behind billions of dollars on maintenance. So, um, you know, they'll they'll make cuts where they can. Um, but of course, they have a big wish list of things they'd like to do. How does half a billion dollars sort of compare to other education spending? Can you put that into context? So there are very few education expenditures um, in the state's allotment system that are $500 million or more dollars. I believe there are only five others. Um, Classroom teacher allotment, that's obviously the biggest one. It's like $4 billion. So this would be one of the biggest line items for education spending in the state. Right. So there are only five other expenditures uh, that are more than half a billion dollars. Um, I mentioned classroom teachers, four billion. Uh, special education is about one billion. Um, so there are a few categories that are that high. I believe if you add together some support professionals, you might get o- over half a mil- half a billion. Um, so there are several items that are ju- I mean, just five items that are that much. Now, there is a lawsuit that's currently working its way through the courts, um, and it calls for billions of dollars for public schools. So how would these bills affect that effort? 
Right. So that is from the long running lawsuit um, that we call Leandro for short after a plaintiff. Um, and essentially what happened in that case is uh, there was a court order a few years ago that said, you know, um, we're going to implement this plan. So the parties came together. That was the state and uh, five families and school boards from low income counties. They finally agreed to come up with this plan to basically rectify issues in the case, saying that you know they weren't getting an adequate education and a judge approved the order. That's gone up to the Supreme Court, which backed it, though the case is before the Supreme Court again, um, on some different issues, very similar issues. Um, but essentially what that agreement says is there's gonna be a gradual increase in education spending, or it's, I mean, it's a fairly monumental increase in education spending, because, uh, you know, just a handful of years from now, it should be about four and a half billion more than what we're currently spending. So next year, it's supposed to be one billion more than we're currently spending. And a lot of that goes for like pre-kindergarten, early education, um, early childhood education, but, um, None of that is is really um, poised to be fund funded based on what lawmakers are interested in funding. Uh, Democratic Governor Roy Cooper wants to fund the whole plan, but Republican lawmakers really don't. And that is they're still in court. You know, they wanted the Supreme Court to rehear you know issues in this case, and so you know there could be some changes in that. But the context really is that. You know, there's a lot of money called for in this plan um, that's been ordered in court. Republican lawmakers don't really want to fund that. One of their biggest priorities is private school vouchers that is not included in this agreement. So how do you reconcile these two competing priorities? You, you know, Republicans have the upper hand in legislature. What are the odds that these bills get passed? So these bills uh, for expansion of the private school voucher program, opportunity scholarships, it's likely they'll pass. Um, Republicans now have a supermajority, um, and they've got an identical bill in each chamber. Uh, so it appears they're likely to be able to override any uh, probably inevitable veto from Governor Cooper. Um, and then as you know, so it, it appears this is going to happen. And as for Leandro? Uh, that there's probably not a legislative will to uh, expand that, especially with the case before the Supreme Court now. The Supreme Court has a new Republican majority. There's hope that you know the Republican majority will change its mind on this plan that calls for this big increase in education spending over the next few years. And so uh, there's there's not much legislative will to actually fund this plan and spend the one billion more dollars toward pre-kindergarten disadvantaged students, early childhood education and special education. Well, I know you'll be covering this every step of the way. Emily, thanks. Glad to be here. That's WRL Education Insider Emily Walkenhorst. For her in-depth coverage of the school voucher bills, visit the education section of WRL.com. I'm Jack Hagel. Thanks for joining us. And thanks for listening to the WRL Daily Download and for making us part of your morning routine. Another great way to get WRL news is the Morning Briefing Newsletter. It's a daily email with triangle news, events, and headlines to help you get ready for the day. Sign up at WRL.com newsletter.